<laughs> I, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm citing people there. So we were making progress and I began to realize that Min Valley was the place these people came to visit. They wanted to know how we did those many things successfully. Min Valley, and I didn't know it at first until we got into national offices, that we were leaders in the nation. That occurred to me kind of slowly. And not only in the nation, even in foreign countries. Because they came to see, how are you doing this? What methods are you using? Who are your people? How are they, how are they qualified? And, and here you are, a bunch of you here in this room, and I met you here tonight. The business continued to grow, and then we made another change in packaging again. We went from liquid semen to the ampule, and then we went to a straw. It looks like a swizzle stick that you mix a drink with. It's manufactured in Europe, an IMV, a guy named Kasu. And it was a much more efficient container for the semen to be injected in, into the cow. The ampule and the pipette left enough of the coating inside of it to almost beat another cow, and that was thrown away. The pipette had a little wiper in the side of it, and when you inseminated that cow with the rectal uh, exploration to pick up the cervix and uh, pass the pipette through it, that little wiper put all of the semen in that horned uterus of a cow, and it worked. And we were able to breed 300 cows per a collection from a bull. And that was with ampules. 300 cows, that's average. We had some that we are actually made close to a thousand breedings from two ejaculates taken 10, 15 minutes apart. Bull semen is so darn easy to extend. It's almost kind of hard to kill, isn't it? <laughs> Compared to other species like horses, horses and hogs, turkeys, and all, many other animals that are bred in that way. By this time now, we're getting a national recognition and a number of people at Minnesota Valley in the sire business, uh, in liquid nitrogen, in a harvest store, and wherever, we were invited there as delegates. We were elected there. I got hooked as a chairman of the Technical and Research Committee for the National Association for a number of years. Guess the people I met. I even met that guy, uh, Christopher Poles, that froze the first seaman. I brought him over from England, and he spoke at a conference that we held in Milwaukee. Harry, you may remember, where are you, Harry? Yeah, you may remember the night we spent in Chicago Hotel and we got robbed? Yeah. <laughs> when we were sleeping, when we were sleeping, I lost the camera and watch. The, anyway, <laughs> We quit Chicago and we went to Milwaukee to have our, have our meetings. Of course, Milwaukee had three of the best German restaurants you would ever want to find. So we enjoyed that. So I'm relating a bunch of incidents that occurred to me working for Minnesota Valley Breeders in the midst of a heck of a wonderful... How am I doing? What have I gone on? Oh my goodness, have, it's gone. We have a few minutes. Yeah, yeah I've gone pretty far, uh, pr pretty long, I mean. Alice, I have one question. Yes, I, I, I'm gonna allow him to take questions and I'll try and answer them. So we succeeded, well, I'm gonna cite three people and that'll only take about less than 10 minutes. The first one, of course, was Wally Miller, but I'll do that. The next one I wanna cite is Ron Shuffler. Ron Shuffler is in this room tonight, somewhere in here. Ron Shuffler, Ron Shuffler was responsible for delivery of everything. And I mean everything. He took the liquid nitrogen, the breeding supplies, the semen replacement, uh, people to lecture on a route. Was that every four weeks, Ronnie? Yeah. Yeah. 
And he drove and I rode next to him for miles and miles and miles. And he did that so successfully. He also picked up harbor stores. He hauled anything you'd want hauled. And he did a darn good job. And Ron, I, co I commend you for the great job you did. Another person I'm going to introduce is, uh, is Helen Ferencamp. She was from Spring Lake Park. She married a guy named Elmer Winterfeld. She had 40 acres just on the edge of town on the way down to the milking herd. Helen was put into the lab. She was about two years older than me. We were both Germans. We never got in a fight. But, <laughs> but we were both Germans. And she was brought in there to wash the glassware and make the semen extender, the egg yolk citrate semen extender. She was an expert with eggs. She had candled eggs in New Prague for years. Turned out, Helen knew what being clean was. We used glassware, we didn't have plastic in the early years. She felt a piece of glass needed to be scrubbed. You could not just spray it or anything. It had to be scrubbed with, to get it clean, capped and sterilized. And as a result, she made all of Minnesota Valley look good because we never failed tests by the USDA, by the University of Minnesota, the diagnostic lab, or a foreign expert export of semen. Helen Winterfeld was outstanding. She could do anything. She worked in the cold room with me for at least two hours every day processing semen, putting it in a container. Helen and I got along wonderful. She had a daughter named Isla, and I, uh, Helen has passed away. And the final person I want to point out is Dame. He was a guy from Lonsdale, a little Czech guy, Ray Kala. Ray Kala. Yes. You should applaud that man because he was outstanding. We, I didn't know his name was Ray. He's called Kelly. And I got a friend of mine sitting here, Jim Becker. He liked him pretty much too. And got along well with him because they were both excellent bull people. Oh, they are. Who's here, Jim? Stand up. Yes. Yes. Kelly lived in one of the houses next to the bull barn in there. Now, he's got a record that's unheard of. He was a herdsman all the years I was in there. I do not know of one accident occurring in the bull barn. Do you, Jim? Someone getting hurt? Paul Simon. Really? Were, were there a couple? Paul Simon. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I thought he was almost pure. <laughs> but when you realize he's handling 80 bulls every day for how many years? And he treated him well. I never saw any of those people beat a bull hit it with a stick, shock it, or anything. And those of you who have pets, you know, you treat them nice, don't you? Kelly did that in that bull barn. I saw Kelly the day he died. He had an inoperable chest tumor of some kind. And I saw him getting his, one of his last shots. And I dearly miss him. And I commend him as being in charge of the crown jewels of Minnesota <laughs> Valley breeders. Think about that. Think of the job that he did. Uh, I'll never forget working with a man like him. We were never close, but we trusted each other, we knew each other, and we worked well together. So those are the three. And I'm going to conclude with a little thing that I was told was okay by uh, Dennis here about Minnesota Valley breeders. We produced gallons and gallons of bull semen. Out in the barn, there were some gutters in back of the bulls, and we produced tons and tons of bullshit. <laughs> Both of those 
are biodegradable 100%. <laughs> now think about that seriously. We did not contaminate the soil, the air, the water, or anything. That's an accomplishment. I wish the petroleum companies could say something like that. But we can, and you can, as people of New Prague, who contributed greatly to that. So ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for your very, very kind attention and uh, listening to me tonight. So much fun to meet all of you. If you have questions, maybe you can address them. Franny, you have a question? Yes, I know, yeah. I, have, I have not mentioned numerous people. Charlie and Ludy Cocktevee, we you know all, all kinds of people that were here. And I know I was going to overlook them. Our, our veterinarian, Dr. Volmer? Yes, Dr. Roland Volmer from Montgomery. And then later he was, we were serviced by his brother Warren here in New Prague. Uh, doctor, thank you for that. I, I meant to mention him. We were very close friends, and he was very effective uh, in his work. He did a perfect job. And I, w I neglected also to mention the diagnostic lab at the University of Minnesota, right next to the Animal Science Department. And we worked with them almost weekly uh, in one way with hundreds and hundreds of samples for testing in there. Some of you, I'm gonna mention one more man, Dr. Harry Rajamanan. Now, I don't know if any of you remember him. His obituary was in the Minneapolis paper last December, I believe. He was a veterinarian from Ceylon, the country of Ceylon. His wife, Kansi, was that her name? Yeah, yeah. He worked with uh, the University of Minnesota, and he and I became very good friends. We did some investigating of a ranch out in Nebraska, and he was a very black man, and I was very white. And you should have seen when we walked in for breakfast, and those cowboys with their boots and hats, seeing this mixed group in there. It was uh, <laughs> kind of wild. But he wanted to separate semen sexually, male and female cells, with a process called electrophoresis. And he knew how to do that. But he had also heard a story that the Minnesota Valley Breeders Lab was one of the top ones in the country to keep sperm cells alive. He says, I'll work with the electrophoresis. You keep the darn cells alive. <laughs> and, and we did, but it was not, not too successful. I've stretched on again. Thank you. Any other questions? Any other comments or questions for Hollis? I'd just like to like one comment. I said this to her earlier. Earlier, my dad was one of the instigators here with the county agent when Wally was that way and everything. And the first year, the farmers had to commit so many cows to service. Dad committed 12 cows, two cows never calved. The 10 cows that calved, we had 11 heifer calves, folks. And at that and at that time, they proved them by the bulls by daughter dam comparisons. And my dad had a brother-in-law that lived over by Jordan, and he he had one cow that was so calf crazy that his milk was just not getting off. And Dad took that cow, and she had twins since that first year. And that first year, heifers calved, heifers calved, and the first lactation, they both made over 400 pounds of fat at that time. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Any other yeah, question? The other thing that I'd like to add, you made the comment about Kelly. Kelly told me one time about, Pete found this pair of bulls over at Roberts, Wisconsin. Kelly drives over there one morning to the trailer to get these bulls, you know, and everything, and goes to the barn. The farmer was in the house already, and he looked around. There was no bulls around. So he went to the house and met the farmer and everything, and, well, where are the bulls? He had them out in the machine shed, and he had one tied to each end of the grain drill on a wheel. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yes, Dennis. Well, Alice, what is your uh, recipe for longevity? You are 96 years old. Your well, mind never ceases in reinventing and studying genetics. If and you're, inspiration. So what is I forgot to mention genetics. I discovered that in my senior year at the U, and I'm still reading 
generic textbooks. My son furnishes me with books like that. If you're born in a Lesur County, Sharon Township, <laughs> and, <laughs> wait a minute, and your name is Schwartz, <laughs> the day you're born, you get 90 years. I'm, I'm serious. My dad's, my dad's cousin died this last December. She was 102 you know, and, and more. That, but there is one book called The Blue Zones by Dan Butner. I stand that next to my Bible because it's worth it. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, I think it was briefly mentioned earlier, but you know, Hollis mentioned a number of names, and he did mention Joe Schuster and, and what Joe did with the starting of Minnesota Valley Engineering. Um, I'll give you a hug. So do you hear me when I told you I was Noah Kelly Collins' granddaughter-in-law? Yes. 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 That was very sweet. Is here? What's your father's name again? Uh, well, Phil there is my father-in-law. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, it's just amazing what those two companies did and meant to the city of New Prague, when you think about it. You know, going back into the 40s, population might have been around 1,200, 1,500 people, maybe. Oh, that was the limit. And to have... 1,500, 1,500. So to have two world-class companies come out of this area was really amazing. Uh, I'm going to keep you captive for a couple more minutes. Uh, we just have a few things that 